Hey everyone, I'm Army Gaming. welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. The newest and latest team race monster has been released, Cryoten. You can currently get him during the Ice Titan race. And so this video is essentially going to be me telling you guys all the tips and tricks to maximize your, the number of nodes you can complete during this race. Keep in mind, you need at least 4 laps to qualify for rewards. And these are the rewards, which are honestly pretty cool. 16 through 20, you get Cold Burrows. Uh, not that great of a monster from what I remember. You get 5 Elementium. 11 through 15, you get him at rank 2. So then he becomes a little more usable. You can get Hasai if you're seventh to tenth place. He's in the winter bug. You get ten elementium, one million food, and then for fourth through tenth you get Olafur, who I don't remember being that great. You could always check my analysis on him. He's also in the winter bug. And then second and third place, this is where it's at. You get a Taiga, a rank one Taiga. He's an amazing light attacker. He's also in the winter bug and the evil legions bug. Still salty about that. You also get fifty elementium and three million food. And then for all of you that get first place, you get Cryoton, the newest team race monster. If your team happens to do 8 laps, you get him at rank 1, 10 laps at rank 2, and 14 laps at rank 3. And that's really where you want to get him at. You also get 70 Elementium, and you get Taiga. And I think that kind of looks like a little star. You might get a rank 1 Taiga. I think previously they don't give you ranked up monsters if you get first place. But I think you would actually get a ranked up Taiga. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. And then individual rewards. If you get first, you get 25 cells of the team race monster. Second place gets 15, and then third place gets 10. Everyone else up to 10th place, they get 5 cells. And if you're first place, you also get 5 bronze relics, 3 bronze relics for second place, and 2 bronze relics for third place. And we'll be doing a little mini analysis on Cryoten. There's a lot to talk about him. So far, I haven't seen anything from the wiki other than I was right. He does have a low base speed. And then people have also told me that he has a skill that costs like 250 stamina, which is insane. It's his mega free skill, so that's going to be worth looking into. But that's all I know about this monster. I don't like to spoil these mini analysis videos by looking into the monster then talking about it. I like to give you guys like a first reaction, a first impression about the monster. So first, let's talk about some little tips and tricks to maximize the number of nodes you complete. And then the mini analysis will be at the very end. And I apologize ahead of time if this video is a little scattered because I'm going to be switching between my baby account and my main account just to highlight different points. And we're going to start off by talking about or any single node that involves breeding or hatching, whether it be the one frog quest where you got to breed like nine common monsters or nine uncommon monsters, whether it be the joint effort like right here, all members contribute as much as they can to hatch 37 monsters. Anything involving breeding and hatching, if you want to do it really fast, the most optimal way to do it this is what I recommend. Get your hatchery and your ultra breeding tree and breeding mountain on the same island or very close to each other and also put a nature habitat, preferably a rank 4 nature habitat or a level 4 nature habitat right next to them. That way you can easily hatch. Look how easy this is. Ignoring Firesaur, my Greenosaur place right there. It's, it's instantaneous. And then I can hatch the other one, place it right there. I can hatch the other one, place it right there. Also, for anything involving hatching, you don't actually need to hatch, you could always just sell. And as for the monster you need to breed in order to com complete this quest really fast, you need to try to get the common nature monster or the common fire monster. So what I would personally recommend is that you breed two common monsters together, just pure natures, or a legendary nature with a common nature. So let me find that. So see, Treezard and any legendary that's nature, and it'll always take 15 seconds and it'll always produce a Treezard. And you can do the same thing with the fire side. So if I only have a fire, legendary fire, and a common fire star, check this out, it'll take exactly 15 seconds, and it'll always produce a monster that takes 15 seconds. So anything involving breeding or hatching, anything involving common monsters, make sure to do those combinations, then you can simply click repeat. Anything that involves ranking up, always try to go for a tree star or a fire star. Now if there's anything that involves a common or a rare, you want to try to breed Greenosaur or Pandakin, and in order to do that successfully, you need my I would highly recommend that you breed a common nature monster with a common fire monster. Don't try to do um like two panicans. The reason two panicans won't work is because there's a possibility they can produce a common nature or a common fire, and that's just gonna take up 15 seconds. But if you only do a nature, a nature common and a fire common, well then it's guaranteed that you get a panican or a greenosaur. So let me see if I have one more common fire monster. I think I should. Hopefully I do. If not no, I don't think I do. Oh yeah, it is, but he's level 1, so I gotta level him up to 4 to be able to breed. So for example, if I was to do Panikin and Treezard, well there's a possibility I make a Treezard, so that'll slow me down. Alternatively, what you could do is use a Fire Legendary, but then again, there's a possibility that you get maybe a Treezard instead of an Uncommon or a Rare. Uh, see, 15 seconds, that's neither Panikin, that's neither Greenosaur. So you want to breed 
what I did up here. You see that I got a panic in. If I click repeat, it's going to be 30 seconds. And that's either going to be a green star, which is uncommon, or a panic in, which is rare. So don't do what I did down here. And again, the reason you want a nature habitat right next to you is so you can easily hatch them. But for this purpose, I'm going to sell. And then just to show you guys, see, that was a tree zard. So this combination doesn't work as well as a combination up here. Let me get rid of this. And now we just wait for this combination just so I can show you guys that it's either going to be uncommon or it's going to be rare. It's never going to be common. See? So there we go. Uncommon and panicking was rare. And so that's a trick to really quickly complete any quest that involves hatched monsters, breeding commons, breeding uncommons, breeding rares. The next thing we need to talk about is ranking up monsters. And in order to rank up monsters really fast, you do the exact same thing. But instead of actually selling the monster or hatching the monster, what you want to do is you want to extract them. So always make sure you have space open. So let me collect right here. Let me click extract. Let me go to common, uncommon, rare. It depends what you need. And just look how fast it is to extract a monster that's level one, whether it's uncommon, common, or rare. 15 sec was that eight seconds for a Greenasar, the uncommon monster. I think the common monsters are like three seconds and then Panikin is like 15 or 30 seconds. Let me see if I have a level one somewhere. No, I don't have a level one commons. Let's see if I have a level one common. So you don't want to level them up. You want to keep them at level one. Treezard, yeah, that takes four seconds, so it's really fast, and you also want to have your ranking up open, so don't ever clog those up. Right now is not the time to rank up monsters. Right now what you want to do is just rank up common, uncommon, and rare monsters, so that's what you're going to do, and it's also really useful to do what, like I have it on my main account. Get your hatchery and your breeding tree and breeding cave right next to your monster lab, that way it's super easy to do, whereas on my baby account, it's kind of far away, so if I want to rank up monsters, I got to go all the way over here. But again, that's just like a very minute thing. It just saves you a couple seconds. But yeah, just as long as these three things and, and the habitat are next to each other, you're good. It, you'll, you'll notice that's what I do on both accounts. You see right here, I have my hatchery, my breeding tree, my breeding cave, and then I have a nature habitat right here. And then for any quest that involves breeding a legendary monster, this is where you need communication. What I would recommend is that you get one teammate to start breeding that legendary monster. That way whenever the quest pops up, whether it be in lap six or lap eight, you're ready good to go. For example, this combination right here, this is a legendary monster. So I'm going to keep this around and I'm going to leave my other teammates to do any quests that involve breeding or hatching on commons. I'm just going to wait for that node that requires a legendary monster to be bred. I'm just going to wait for that to pop up and then bam, we automatically complete that node. So you have 30 members on your team. Just get some designated member to do that. And the same can be said for ranking up. There's eventually is going to be a quest that involves ranking up a legendary monster and ranking up X amount of epic monsters. You might want to get some teammates to start doing that. It's a really useful advice. And again, there's 30 of you, so you really have to plan. This is a team race after all. It involves teamwork. And another useful advice when it comes to breeding the legendary monster, you should probably activate your guardian of breeding to speed it up. That way you can afford to spend some gems. Otherwise, it's going to cost you like 120 gems to speed up the entire node. I think you have better odds just trying to go for legendary having your breeding tree active, but at the same time that may clog up your hatchery, so just be careful of that. What I would recommend right now, just like how I'm doing, have a legendary ready to, whenever that quest pops up. It's Trust me, it's going to save you so much time. And then as for breeding epic monsters, honestly, I recommend that you just skip it entirely with gems. Coordinate with your teammates, one time one member skips, the other time another member skips. That's the one quest that it doesn't really benefit you to try to breed epic monsters because it's going to cost you a lot more. Even if you speed it over and over again, Trust me, you're going to spend so many more gems, especially the one for all quest, where you have to do like a lot of epic monsters. It's not worth it. Just completely skip that with gems if you can, or get a teammate to skip it if they can. However, if you do want to try to breed epic monsters, maybe for the joint effort quest, different teammates can start breeding epic monsters. What I would recommend is this combination, Tarzape and Thundernex. Because if you look, if you actually look at the monsters that you'll make breeding these two combinations, four of them are epic monsters. Dragonian Beast, Griffix, Rhinox, and Rabidex, right? You have you have a chance to get four, those four epic monsters. And as for the other possible combinations that will be bred if you breed these two monsters, you get 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 3 minutes, 6 minutes, 1 hour, and 2 hours. That's not a lot of waiting time. So if you can, if you do want to go for breeding epic monsters, this is the combination to use. And alright, that takes care of all the ranking up, the breeding. Now let's talk about collecting gold. What I would recommend everyone to do is to just n simply not collect your gold until there's a specific node that calls for it. Whenever a node says, like for example, do your part, 15 members must collect 480k gold, well perfect, then you can just simply collect all the gold that you've been saving up. 
So let me show you actually my main account. On my main account, look at all these habitats, all these legendary habitats that I haven't collected any gold from. In fact, if that one frog quest was to pop up, the one where I need to get like millions and millions of gold, I can easily do that because all of these habitats are stacked with 1 million. So this row right here is 4 million, 8 million, 12 million, 12 million, and then 4 more, 16 million just from this island right here. So yeah, do not collect your gold until there's a specific quest to ask for it. And more importantly, communicate with your team. Because imagine if one of my teammates is doing the same thing and that one frog quest pops up and then I collect all my gold and he collects all his gold. Well, that's just being wasteful because one of us could have completed the quest, but now we both used up all our resources to complete the quest. So the main theme of this is communication. You need to make sure you communicate with your team. So do not collect any gold until there's a specific quest that asks for it and make sure you call it out if you're going to be collecting it. And again, to show you on my baby account, it's the exact same thing. All of these all of these different habitats are ready for me to collect gold. And so again, do not collect anything until the quest calls for it. And it's just as simple as going into your chat and then just telling your team, I'm doing the one for a gold quest. And that's how you let your team know that you're going to be accomplishing that quest. Or if you have a Facebook chat, that's way easier too. And then for any quest that involves food, it's the exact same thing. Let me show you on my main account once again. Look at all this food that I haven't collected. Lots of them are the black lotus root, whereas some of them are the angel beans, the winged angel beans. Let me go on my baby account to show you that. So let me click on grow food and the black lotus root that gives you 100k, whereas the winged angel beans that gives you 20k. The reason I grow some winged angel beans and some black lotus root is because there are some quests that involve you, you to collect a lot of food. And there's some, I think it's the, the joint effort or the do your part that says like 15 members must collect 20k food. Well, it just so happens that the winged angel beans is exactly 20k. So just make sure that you know where everything is at. So for example, this one in the corner right here, this is my winged angel beans and the one in the corner right here on the bottom right hand, that's also winged angel beans. And I think I'm going to do the whole bottom row winged angel beans and then the top row black lotus root. So yeah, that's just for whenever a quest, whether it be a one for all or whether it be the joint effort or the, or the do your part quest, you just got to be ready for anything. And then one more thing I want to talk about is player versus player. So there are some nodes that are going to require you to collectively do like eight PVP battles or there's going to be a one frog quest where you got to win nine PVP battles. What I would personally recommend for that, let me go over to my baby account. There's a few things you can do. First of all, what you should do is you should gem the battles. Do not gem the node. The node will probably cost you like over 100 gems. Whereas if you have three battles to start with and then you gem the next six, that's only 30 gems. So 30 gems as opposed to over 100 gems. So gem the battles, not the nodes. You'll save a ton of gems like that. And what you can do to get some good PvP matches is to purposely drop some battles. Purposely lose. Because if your trophy ranking goes down, there's going to be easier opponents, especially on your defense log. You know, oh, that's another thing actually. You can change your team to something super, super weak. Let's say like, let's say like this common right here. Or you know what, just literally put a common. I, I said Spongebob was common. No, he's not common. But yeah, just put like comments, put a really, really weak defense so that you're constantly targeted. And that way, once you get attacked, you're going to have really easy opponents, probably, as opposed to like some tough opponents like right here, Oscar Gamer. That's pretty high level monsters. So, yeah, that's what you want to do. You can change your defense to purposely lose, drop some trophies. And just trust me, that's going to be so much easier if you have less trophies, if you're not forced to face level 130 opponents all the time, like how I am on my main account. Let me let me show you guys that for reference. So let me go to PVP. And look how difficult this is. It's going to take me a while to get a PvP win. Even if I refresh, let's see. Am I lucky? Nemesis monster, Nemesis monster, Nemesis VIP monster, Dungeon master, Nemesis monster. Uh, it doesn't seem so good. And once again, everyone is 130. We have a Sammy, a Lum, a Nox. We have a Timerion, Shalinar, Lum, just a Kai the Eradicator, a Krampus who can outspeed me. Oh my gosh, like, see, if I was to drop trophies, if I was lower down in the leagues, it'd probably be a lot easier for me. So... On my main account, I can't do it, but on my baby account, I can definitely do it. So again, there's 30 members in a team. Just ask one of the weaker players, maybe if they don't mind. Or honestly, the weaker players probably have the best chance because at the lower leagues, it is super easy. Let me show you guys a picture of how easy it potentially is. This is in the silver league. It's, it's amazing, right? So that's one advice I have for PVP. And then lastly, I think the last thing you have to do is like crafting runes. So what I would recommend for this is just to... Usually you have to craft like X amount of level two runes. Maybe like four players have to craft a level six rune. This really varies a lot. So what I would personally recommend is just to get a level two rune ready. So even if you don't need it, you know, it didn't cost you that much. Get a level two rune ready. And that way it doesn't clear up your time too much. It only takes five minutes. 
and whenever an, a specific quest calls for it that's when you start crafting whatever you need to and then with that little bit of information i think that's all the advice i have to give best of luck to all of you seriously i mean it and the most important thing really is team communication you really shouldn't be fighting over each other over the top rewards first you need to make sure your team can win so you need to make sure your team can get a huge lead and once you guys have a lead then you guys can i guess fight over the individual rewards but mo the most important thing is that the whole team wins so that's what you need to do you need to work together you need to call out the quest hey i'm doing the one for all quest hey let's all do the do your part quest and yeah i hope that's the main takeaway do not fight amongst each other but work together to do your best in this race some other piece of advice and i've done this in the past um if you trust your teammates or if you have a friend that you trust then again this is only if you like completely trust them then maybe give them your login info so they can use your accounts again i'm not telling everyone to do that only if there's someone you really really trust for example sherlock on my baby account has access to my baby account whenever she wants to use it so she's free to log in i've, I've told her i have a lot of gems on this account this this account is specifically for the team she's free to use as many gems as she needs to if it's going to make the team win so i've given her full authority to use the account as she seems fit and then as for my team on my main account well um there was actually what like two or three races ago where i was actually managing five different accounts i was logging into every single account for my teammates just to try to win the race and that took a lot of effort that required a lot of effort but hey we ended up winning so that's one piece of advice i could recommend again it's not for everyone it's only if you trust someone or if someone trusts you and then alternatively what you can do and this also happened two three races ago uh, the reason i was managing five accounts is because two of them were my own two of them were baby accounts that i would cycle into the team and cycle out whenever there was a do your part quest i would cycle in one of my baby accounts do my part with that account kick out that player and then put in my other baby account do your part with that account kick out that player logging with a different account and so basically i was five different players in one team so that was pretty crazy but it helped us accomplish because essentially instead of needing 15 members to do it i only needed 10 other members because i was taking care of five of them so that's just that's a bit of advice i can do that's going the extra mile that's aside from everything you can do in game so that's gonna be it as far as tips and tricks i really hope it was helpful with that being said, let's jump into the mini analysis portion of the video.